acids and bases. So acids, they like to donate a hydrogen ion and that's what we're talking about when they're placed in water. So with acids and bases we're always talking about these species when they're in water. So in other words when they're aqueous. So acids like to donate a hydrogen ion or we say a proton because a hydrogen ion is just a proton. Bases, also known as alkalines, like to accept a hydrogen. And this picture here shows exactly what happens with an acid and a base. So an acid, for instance, hydrochloric acid, is the hydrogen plus whatever the rest of the acid is, but it always has to have a hydrogen there. And what it does, that acid, is it donates that hydrogen to a base. And that's all that's happening. An acid is giving away its hydrogen and a base is accepting a hydrogen. Properties of acids. They usually taste sour. They are corrosive. In other words, they can destroy living tissue and metal. You'll often think of corrosive as eating through things. And with acids, they will eat through both any form of living tissue, such as skin or flesh, um, and also things like wood, so anything made out of trees, etc., etc., and also metal. And that's a big difference between um, acids and bases. Turns litmus paper red. Litmus, for those of you that haven't seen any, is an indicator paper, and we're doing a prac with litmus paper. But basically, there's blue litmus paper and red litmus paper, and acids will turn either of those two red. They're usually covalent molecular in structure and will ionise when they're added to water. So if we have a look here at hydrochloric acid, hydrogen chloride, it's a covalent molecular compound. However, when that's put into water, the hydrogen is donated, so it becomes the chloride ion. It ionises in water. And it also, the hydrogen then forms with the water to become hydronium. So it's gone from being covalent molecular to being an iron. Acids are also neutralised by bases and they have a pH of less than 7. And of course they're proton or hydrogen ion donors. Here are some examples of the most common acids that you'll find. And these are a couple here that you need to know the formulas off by heart. So nitric acid is HNO3. And this is used often um, in industry uh, to manufacture fertilizers in particular. And also when they do copper etching. So artists will use that or um, I guess if they're making clocks out of copper. Hydrochloric acid, you've all used that one in the lab definitely. And that's HCl. It's produced in your stomach. It's also used to clean bricks and concrete. And sulfuric acid, which is H2SO4. And that's used in car batteries and plastics, insecticides, detergents, and in pharmaceuticals. And the other one that you'd need to know off by heart the formula of is acetic acid, also known as ethanoic acid. And if you have a look at the formula here, um, CH3COOH, what do you think of? Eth, meth, eth, two carbons. Okay, so ethanoic acid. And that's found in vinegar um, and it's used in pickling in the fermentation of foods. There's some other ones here as well that you'll be familiar with. Um, lactic acid in milk. Um, lactic acid's also produced in, in your muscles. Scorpic acid's vitamin C. Uh, carbonic acid's found in your soft drinks. And citric acid's found in lemon juice. Properties of bases. They taste bitter. They feel slippery or sometimes described as feeling soapy. They turn litmus paper blue. They are usually ionic compounds except for ammonia. I will be looking in some detail with some reactions in a minute. They may be caustic. In other words, destroy living tissue. And remember I said earlier that the difference between acids and bases is that acids will eat away at metals. Bases will not. Um, bases are often used as, well, they, you'll generally find that they're cleaning products. You may have heard of caustic soda before. Um, things like your Harpic toilet cleaner and your Drano are very, very caustic. Um, they can destroy living tissues. When you pour them down the drain or in the toilet, they'll destroy all the bacteria that's there, but they won't wreck your pipes. 
I mean of the plumbing, not of your own pipes. Anyway, moving on. Okay, they've got a pH greater than 7. So it's above 7. Acids are below 7, remember. And a base that's soluble in water is called an alkaline. So spaces can be described as being alkaline, which is more of the adjective describing it, or basic, or it can be an alkali if it's soluble in water, or it's a base if it's not soluble in water. It can have both of those names, alkali or base. And it's a proton acceptor. It will accept a hydrogen ion. So here's a couple of your common bases that you'll see. Ammonia is a very um, popular cleaning product. Um, they say they're in detergents, also in fertilizers. And you get that really pugnant smell with ammonia in hair dyes as well. Uh, sodium hydroxide, caustic soda, NaOH, which is in soaps and detergents. Sodium carbonate, Na2CO3, another um, quite uh, um, popular one or found in detergents and washing powders. They're the three that I'd really, really like you to know. You should also really be familiar with calcium hydroxide. Whenever you see a hydroxide or an oxone, you should pick up that that is a base. Uh, magnesium hydroxide here, you'll often find them in indigestion products um, like your Enos or your Rennies or things like that because what they will do is balance out too much acid or neutralize too much acid in your stomach. 